Okay, I should probably read from the novel. I have to get this done, because this book goes to somebody. Ah, <sighs> It's hard to read it right now because the thyroid's way the fuck off. And, uh, this is a subconscious thing right here. I know what it is. Mm. So I got past the Mojo Bag story, which is a wonderful story. But then I started getting into the bad stuff. <laughs> kind of curious. <sighs> I used to have really long hair. And I had a habit of doing this and twirling. A ponytail. That habit's still ingrained in me. <laughs> so, that's why I rub my damn head so much. Right, I'm probably going to be leaning forward to stretch, so I should probably move you all back a little bit. Yeah. How are you doing? Hmm. Okay, let's do this. This might be a little bit bumpy, but we'll get through it. We'll get through it together, kids. <laughs> Chapter 2. I know, I'm stalling. Just hang on. He was nervous. He knew he shouldn't be, but damn, he was really nervous. They had went through hell to be together, both their own, private, and those around them. They had shared weaknesses, fears, cried at the fear of loving someone else and even telling the other one to go away. They wanted to suffer alone. Believing suffering was the only true feeling they knew. They were scared. <clears throat> they had experienced both the wonderful pleasures and the sheer terrifying feeling that goes along with truly being in love. Ooh. Each one refusing to leave because they just couldn't. The thought of life without the other one was just too terrifying to bear. They had stayed. Fuck. Woo. Freud called couches ready. Damn. Hang on, where was I? Uh -huh. I'll get through this, motherfucker. Yes, I will. Mm. Ouch. Where's my mnemonic thing? Ah. My green stick went away. I need to get a new one. Fuck, I can't. Hang on. Damn it. It sucks when this kind of shit happens. You have to slow down. Well, I was using a bamboo calligraphy pen, but I can't find it, so fuck it, we'll use a pencil. All right, sorry about that. This may happen a couple of times. They had stayed. God damn it. Ow. I got this. They had stayed and loved giving all of their heart, and they loved one another even more for doing this. And like true lovers do, they came out the other side better for it. Love that much stronger. But he was nervous and scared as she sat upstairs and read about his childhood. He had never shared that part with her. He had kept that locked away from her and even himself. A place so dark inside of him that light couldn't break it. A darkness he had tried to hide from everyone most of his life. White trash, you white trash piece of shit. Whenever he tried, whenever he tried to shine light into the darkness, he would see the creatures waiting for him. His fear of facing those creatures just created more darkness. So he tried tucking it away in the back of his mind, much the same way he had tucked songs from the hourglass in the back of the closet. Out of sight, out of mind, out of fear. Well, what if it scared her? What if she wanted no part of him after that? She already dealt with his chronic pain, and that almost tore them apart. What if this was too much? He resisted a strong, very very strong urge to tiptoe back upstairs and peek in the door. Instead, he headed to the kitchen, and he, when he was this nervous, he, he couldn't write or paint. 
It always turned horrible and made him feel even worse. The only thing he could do was cook. He loved cooking. And the more nervous he was, the better the food. Taking his time, letting all the worries, and giving the food all the love it deserved, he was able to find a calm again. God damn it. I hate when I do that. He searched through the fridge, not really thinking about what he was going to cook. Garlic. Always garlic. Half an onion. A zucchini that needed to be eaten. Tomatoes. Artichoke heart. Red, yellow, green peppers. Parmesan, white cheddar, and provolone cheese all went into the cradle of his arm. He put it all on the counter. That seems like a lot. I don't think... <laughs> I think my mind did that. He glanced over to see if there was something he should think about as he cooked. Confidence is... Where are you at, bear? Come here. Mm. I don't have a poo bear right now. He'll come back. But I got a big old bear. All right, here we go. Damn, motherfucker. Shit hurts. Confidence is... Confidence is having someone whisper very strong, very clear at one constant rhythm into your ear. I believe in you. Perfect, he heard her say in his mind. He gave the voice a smile as the knife sliced through a veggie and a thunk as it hit the cutting board. Slice, thunk, slice, thunk, slice. Confidence, he said, exhaling sharply. Slice, thunk, is having your loved one read a revealing part of your life you never told her about and believing it will be okay. Slice, thunk. Almost eight minutes. Jesus, we didn't, we didn't even get two pages. Okay, we're almost there. He fell silent and listened to the rhythm of blade to board. Eventually the noise became soft as he started to relax. Soon the smell of bacon filled the air, and he put the bacon on a towel to drain. He added olive oil to the grease, grabbed several taters from the tater bin. Slice, slice, slice. He diced them up and threw them in the skillet with more garlic. They popped and sizzled to his satisfaction, so he went out and breathed, ain't it? They popped and sizzled to his satisfaction. So he went outside, cut some rosemary and sage, and added that to the taters as well. He was calm again. An hour later, he returned to the studio with a massive plate of fried taters, a side of bacon, and an omelet filled with grilled veggies and cheese, along with a fresh pot of coffee from the stove. I made Sally's brew, he said as he walked into the room. Yeah, I know my accent changes all the time. Fuck off. I've been everywhere. <laughs> she, had set the story... Fuck. she had set the story aside and was watching the rain through the window. For a second, he wasn't sure she heard him. There was a very serious look on her face, and tears were streaming down her cheeks. Not sure what to do, he stopped in his tracks. Still holding the plate of food and coffee, he asked very carefully, What? She looked around at the piles of papers. Where is the beginning? He set the food down and looked around for a second. Um, the beginning? Um, well, there really isn't one, but maybe this? No, wait, where, where is it? He fumbled nervously with the papers. Ah, here it is. What's wrong? Do you not like it? Shit, you don't like it, do you? Oh, shit. Uh, I should have just put it back in the closet. Shit. She grabbed the plate. She grabbed, <laughs> she grabbed the papers, plate, and coffee, kissed him on the head, and said, It's wonderful. Now go away. As he was leaving the room, he looked back to see she had already started again. Go on, she said with a serious tone and looking up. Love you. All right, I need to pause for a second. I'll be right back.